Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at some hand loads I did for my 45 Colt. Uh, recently I dove off into the world of loading for 45 Colt. And I was reading into some of Elmer Keith's loadings and some of, jo some of John Linebaugh's. And I found an article from American Handgunner um, about his death. And it mentioned in that article that John Linebaugh's pet load was 8 grains of Winchester 231. All right, guys, I wanted to stop this right here and make this perfectly clear. The article says that this load is for large frame Ruger handguns only. Do not, I mean do not, load and shoot these in a single action army or a single action army clone. They are not for that. It will exceed the pressures for a single action army or single action army clone. Only shoot these in a Ruger large frame handgun with a 250 to 260 grain cast bullet. So I have two different kinds of cast bullets that I got from Montana Bullet Works that I loaded over eight grains of Winchester 231 and I figured we'd shoot them today in my Blackhawk. Since my last video, I have since changed the grip frame on this Blackhawk to a stainless steel one. I like the two-tone look better and the stainless steel over the aluminum offers better balance, I feel like. Um, Brownells had that in stock. I got it, I got it fitted. And so we're gonna be doing some shooting with that today. So like I mentioned, um, I changed the grip frame on this to a stainless one. I also re I changed the uh, shape of the frame a little bit. And I don't know if you can tell, I had to uh, change the shape on these grips. These grips are not staying, I'm changing the grips too. But I've got it a little more, a fit a little more comfortable to my hand. So, um, so the bullets I'm going to be shooting today, I got two different kinds. I've got these 255 grain Keith semi wad cutters, and I've also got some 250 grain lead flat points. These are the wider flat points. They got the same width uh, point as those Keith bullets. So we'll shoot those through my chronograph and we'll see how they um, measure up as far as speed. According to that article, uh should be right around 900 feet per second so we'll see um how accurate that is all right so the first ones we're going to be shooting are the um keith semi wad cutters i got my chronograph on it has bluetooth capability which i haven't really got to use yet so i've got the phone out here to see how well um that registers the speeds more prop it on the trigger guard here to get the height the way I want it and uh, we'll um, see what it does See if that um all right so it imported it's like the average was 888 feet per second uh es of 25 standard deviation of eight so all right let me go change that uh let me go change that target out and uh We'll shoot the next batch. All right, we're gonna shoot the 250 grain lead flat nose. <clears throat> they are gas check. So we'll see if that helps accuracy any. Another thing, I'm using Magnum primers because it's all I have currently. Um, I feel like maybe accuracy can be improved by going to a standard primer. We'll see, uh, that'll be a test for another date. 
Also, I'm, I've got to figure out another way to do a rest because I'm using this old rifle bag and the gas from the between the cylinder and the forcing cone is tearing this thing up pretty bad. So that's another thing only. I got a lot of things to do for my shooting setup. But I wanted to get this uh, shot <clears throat> and, and get this stuff out so y'all can see it. So let's shoot these and see how they do. Alright, we got in there and get these targets. See what I'm talking about? It shredded that duct tape I had put on there to help reinforce that. But we got in there and get these uh, targets and we'll take a look at them and take a look at the numbers um, off the chronograph. Alright, so here's what we got. This this first one is the uh, Keith 255 grain semi wad cutters. And I left the cardboard here so you can see these two shots that went just above the paper. But you can see the grouping on that. I actually had one that hit in the in the circle there. And I feel like I can tighten this up and probably get them all together um, if I had a better way to rest the pistol. I'm still learning and experimenting with this. But the numbers on it is um, the average feet per second with this bullet is uh, 888 feet per second. Had an extreme spread of 25 and a standard deviation of 9, which in my understanding is pretty good. Um, the next one, which is the 250 grain, uh, lead flat nose with gas check. You can see the grouping and having one low is pretty similar. The numbers on it, average of 879, extreme spread of uh, 51, standard deviation of uh, 18. So that's the, uh, John Lin line balls uh, pet load according to the American Handgunner article I read that was published around the time of his death. The line ball pet loads. Um, I feel like by the numbers, the 255 grain Keith is going to be a really good load. Um, I just need to work on myself, my shooting technique, and handgun shooting from arrest. This is all new to me. And it's something that I'm really interested in and I'm going to be working on. I feel like with a proper rest and a proper shooting house bench that um, I can tighten those groups up a lot. I also had some conversation with a friend of mine that does some reloading and he thinks switching from a, a magnum primer to a non-magnum primer may help the accuracy also. So I will be checking that. All in all, the chronograph has... has opened my eyes to what a good tool it is as far as looking at numbers and determining how effective hand loading is. Uh, prior to this, I was just loading based off the specs in the book, going up or down to see if the accuracy improved and, you know, was calling it good without really thinking about that the, that day of shooting, I may have shot that particular load really well, but it may not be the best for my rifle by the numbers or my handgun by the numbers. So it's opened up a whole nother world of thinking to me and it's, I've got to reconsider a lot of the loads that I've done. I wrote them all down, so I'll be revisiting a lot of my loads once I get a bench uh, built to where I can, you know, set up to do it as accurately as I can. Um, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all tagging along for this journey. And uh, I hope to see y'all around next time. I appreciate you.